Hello everyone, welcome back. Well, last time we painted a big, bold, fiery, expressive flower. So this time we are going to do just the opposite. We are going to paint a more muted, calm, elegant flower. We'll talk a little bit about painting a white flower on a white background and how to make that pop. If you're new here, my name is Teresa. I'm a surface pattern designer and watercolor artist. I'm not actually going to use a reference photo. I just know that I want a flower that's a big bowl type shape, something like a peony. It doesn't have to necessarily be a peony, just something with that general shape. I just want a white flower. And so let's talk a little bit about that while we get started here. To paint a white flower on a white background, you have to add a little color so that you can see it. Now, whether you do this as maybe reverse painting where you are painting a little bit of the background and the shadows and letting the paper be the white petals, you can do it that way or you can do it like what I'm doing and that is using buff titanium to add just a hint of color. And to be honest, I really want this to be a little darker than a true white flower because I do want it to be a little moody and, you know, add a little elegance and some punch. I want it to, to be very obvious on the paper. So you can water down your buff or I've also used a little Payne's Gray here, which I really like using. I'm also using a little green, all those colors to add shadow to these petals. So you can water it down as much as you want. It just depends on the look that you're going for. But I really like this. I just think these colors are very elegant and paint the petals however you like. I'm just being very loose about it. I'm using a mop brush or a quill brush. A lot of people use the term quill and mop brush to mean the same thing when technically they are a little different. A quill brush comes to a fine point, but a mop brush does not. It has more of a rounded tip. This one is a little more stiff, so it's easier to control, which I really like. And I'm just intuitively moving around this flower, adding petals. And we can lighten areas and we can darken areas. So I'm really just getting my base layer down to decide where do I want everything. And that's a little dark. I may wipe that up a little bit. And that went a little too far out. So I just put some clean water on that and use my paper towel to wipe that up because this is a loose floral you know we can have some little shadows in the background and it doesn't matter so that little piece that i just soaked up if that doesn't dry completely clean it's not a big deal it doesn't matter and i'm using sap green and a little green gold a little olive green you know my typical greens i'm just dropping in different ones and I really want a nice organic leaf here. So you can see how I'm doing that. I think I'll add a little undersea green. Oh, actually, I think this is periline green. I interchange those quite a bit too, periline and undersea. And I'll use my usual little trick of using the paint tube to put a little 
few little squiggly veins here. To me, that gives the best look. I, I love that look. But you really need to do it while it's wet. It doesn't work if it, the paint's already dry. And I think another one right here would be nice. And I like it when, oops, that's too much. Let me wipe that up. It, when you use your paper towel to wipe something up like that, just make sure you're using a clean part of your paper towel so that you don't get pigment off in the white space where you don't want it. I forgot what I was saying. Um, I think just the fact that I'm not going to completely cover this leaf, as you see, it, it's I'm allowing it to be very thin in areas and then thicker in other areas. That nice, that adds a nice organic feel. And I'm kind of being a little sloppy here with my lines on this one. Uh, I'm not real happy about that, but that's okay. And now I was trying to decide where to put the stem. You know, there's plenty of white space off to the left to put the stem right there, but that doesn't really go with the way that the flower is facing. So it really needs to go right here. So we are going to squeeze it in right in this little spot. You really have to kind of look and see where is your flower looking? And this flower looks like it is facing up and slightly to the left. It's leaning a little bit to the left. So, you know, you just want to make sure that your stem conveys that as well. You don't want your stem being off in a different direction. And I'm going to drop in several colors on this stem. I put some Van Dyke Brown in there. This is some Perilene. I started with green gold and sap, and I like my stems to be sketchy. You just want to make sure that it's it's thick enough. If your stem is too thin, it's not going to look natural. I have to remind myself of that all the time because I tend to do my stems a little bit thin, so I always have to rethink it and say, okay, is that really thick enough for the for the bulk? of that flower and so this is dried now i'm just reassessing you know the greens are so bold and vivid that they're overpowering the flower in to my eye anyway so i'm going to add a little more color i was really happy with the color of this flower but i just think it's it doesn't look balanced. The colors do not look balanced between the stem and the leaves and the petals. So I am going to take a little bit more Van Dyke Brown and drop it in. So the first thing I did was kind of wet that area with some very clean water and now I'm just dropping in just a very light touch of Van Dyke Brown and now I'm going to feather it out across that petal so that there are no hard lines. And I think I need a little more in here. So I'm doing the same thing, adding just a little bit of water. And now I'll come back with a little color, very watery Van Dyke Brown. And some Payne's Gray. I really like that blue. You could also use a pink or a red in a very diluted form to add just a hint of color in here, but I decided to go with the Payne's Gray. Just smooth it out. Let that Payne's Gray fall into some shadows. Maybe a little on this side as well. You don't want one color in one spot. It's really better if you have 
the colors in multiple spots. So I'll just kind of play with this for a minute. See how deep I want to go with it. I'll have to add some more in because you know, it looks kind of odd with the blue being on the left and the right. And there's just a little streak up on that back pedal. So I'm, I'm probably going to add a little bit back there as well, just to round it out. Another way that you can paint a white flower with watercolor, you know, you could use gouache or acrylic, of course. We could have painted the background first and just left the space for the white flower. That can be pretty challenging. You've got to really plan out your flower beforehand in order to do that. Another thing you can do is to surround your white flower with other elements such as green leaves and things like that, and that will help it pop. And of course you can leave as much white space as you want on your petals and just add shadows and stuff. That, that's a really lovely look as well. But, you know, you, you do want to balance your intensities. So like we have here, our leaves and our stem are very vibrant. And I just felt like with the white background and the white petals, the petals also needed to be a little more vibrant and colorful. And that's why I've added more of the buff and left less white paper. But both looks are good. You just want to get a balance with all your colors. I like to start out very light, lighter than I think I want it, and then build up. Because once once it's dark, it's really hard to pick that color up, especially after it dries. It is doable, but depending on the size of the area, you know, you run the risk of, of creating some water spots. I think I'll add a little more on this side. This little brush, I've heard this called an eradicator brush. Um, I will link this, that little silver brush that I just used. I'll link it down below. I forget the manufacturer now. It is a great little brush if you need to smooth out a hard line. It works really well, you know, because the bristles are very short and they're stiff. So you can kind of scrub out any hard lines, but you have to be very careful with it because it is pretty strong. It will really erase too much if you are not careful. Now I really think adding these stronger colors, these deeper colors are helping to balance against that green that we have. I like the way this is looking. I think we need a few more petals around the outside, which I'll, I'll get to in just a moment. And our center is going to be very dark. So that is going to be a real focal point and a pop of color that will make all these lighter colors more luminescent when I get to that part. Now I'm using sepia and I'm going to mix it up. I'm going to use a little bit of sepia and then I'll come back and use a little bit of Van Dyke Brown just to give some depth in color. And I love this round brush that I'm using. It's a number 10 Masters Touch. It is the perfect size for doing this kind of work. And this particular round brush 
does a great dry brush effect. I have several round brushes and not all of them will give a good br uh, dry brush look, but this one really does. It's a good size too. And I may come back with the paint gray and do some deeper, more saturated paint gray too. But right out here, this is this is the area that's kind of bothering me. It looks kind of uh, naked. So I'm going to add another little petal in here. I want to be careful not to go too dark. I can always add to it later. You know, I don't want everything to be the same hue or the same, um, what do you call it? Light, medium, dark. I'm blanking out on the word. Because then it will just be kind of monotone. And especially with muted colors, it's easy to get things very monotone. So you really need to be careful to do light, mediums, and darks. And I have a feeling that's going to be too light. And it's actually showing up on camera lighter than it is in person. But I think I may let that dry and reassess it. I may add to it. This petal up front is kind of bothering me a little bit. So I'm going to add a little bit of shadow to the top of it here. So now this is completely dry and I've decided that these little soft petals in the background are a little too light, just barely. So we're going to do just like we did before and add just a little bit of water, not much. And then I'm going to take some buff. First I'm going to start with buff and we'll see how much that adds. Because like I said, I don't want a lot. I don't want it this dark. I just want to be able to see it a little more than what we are seeing it. And that's just a personal preference. And then I'm going to do a little bit right here. And I want those edges to be soft. That's why I added the clean water first. And then we can blend it out. Going from the bottom, working our way up to it. That's a little bit better. Maybe just a touch more right there. And have it be a little bit streaky. I kind of like that look. I think that helps a lot. It helps give it a little more dimension. We can add a little bit here.
Okay, I like that. You know, it's a delicate balance between what's enough and what's too much. Because we don't want everything to be as bold. These are probably a little darker than I would like. And I could go back in and try to lift some of that. But, you know, it, it's not that bothersome to me. I'm okay with that. You know, I'm more afraid of, of messing that up now because I've worked on, on this quite a bit. So I think we're probably better off just leaving it the way it is. It's when I start fiddling with things too much that things go wrong. So you kind of have to learn when is a good time to stop. And I think this is a good time to stop. Well, I hope you enjoyed that one. If you did, please give me a thumbs up to let me know. And if you haven't subscribed already, please consider subscribing. I have a lot more really great videos coming up real soon. And if you painted along with me today, I would love to see your version of this flower. Just tag me on Instagram using the hashtag painting with Bila and I'll be able to comment on it. Thanks so much and hope to see you next time.